Hello everybody, my name is Mohit Deshpande, and uh, in this video I want to talk about features and feature extraction um, in the context of face detection. But before we actually get into that, I want to start by defining what are features, and I kind of want to go through an analogy so that you kind of better understand intuitively what they are, and then we'll transition on to uh, how face detection in specific uh, uses these features. So, what is a feature? Well, features are just Quantifiable features are first of all they're quantifiable. There's some way that we can describe them, you know, either numerically or through some sort of fixed uh, list or something like that. But they're, but they're, they're quantifiable properties. They're shared by our examples. And they're used primarily for machine learning, in our case. That's not to say that features are only used for uh, machine learning, but in the context of face detection, uh, they're used for, whoops, I should, I should say machine learning. They're used you know, for machine learning, but they, they have many other things, so like set features and stuff. But anyway, specifically to, to machine learning, and we care about these features because they represent important properties about our data that we can use to make decisions like categorizing or grouping. So let, let me let me start with an example. Now let's suppose that uh, we wanted to you know teach an AI to classify like different types of birds or something like that. That's my really bad <laughs> really bad image of a bird. So pretend that that's a pretend that that's a bird. I'll even label it bird. I'm not really good at drawing. So uh, suppose this is a bird. So what kind of features might we have with with, with birds? So there there are a couple that we can come up with. There are maybe like color of the bird. There may be like sound that it makes. There's you know uh, size. Maybe how big the bird is. And and etc. There are, you know there are many more than these that we can use, and as it turns out, you know using a combination of these features, we if we saw some new bird and we wanted to label it, we could compare the new bird's features here with all the features that we've seen before in our training training examples uh, of birds, and we can kind of reasonably guess what category or group. Uh, our, our bird should our new bird should belong to and so this is kind of the intuition behind it um, So let me actually just label this AI for birds so suppose we were trying to do something like this, you know here are the some of the example uh, features that we might use and then the, the thing is that the AI would be given lots of these features from birds and it'd be told well if you have this combination of features, then this bird is a falcon, or if you have this combination of features, then this bird is a sparrow, or if you have this combination of features, then this bird is a duck, or, or something like that. And it's been given, you know, lots and lots of these examples so that when it encounters a new bird, it finds, the, it extracts these same features of the bird. Maybe, maybe, maybe it needs a human to actually tell it, here's the color and the sound that it makes, and then here's the size and whatnot. Maybe it needs a human to actually give those features, but uh, when it's when it's given, the AI is given these features, it can categorize this new bird as being, you know, some in one of the categories that it already knows about. And so that's kind of the intuition behind uh, what these features are. They're, they represent, like I said, important uh, properties about our data, and we use them so that we can better make decisions. And so you might be saying, well, we're dealing with all these uh, birds, why don't, what's, what, how does this work in face detection? And so it's a bit different from these, these features here are a bit different than for, for faces, and that's because you have to remember that for a, for a computer, when it sees an image, it just sees the raw pixel values. There's no like greater, you know, we use those pixel values to maybe give us some more understanding about the image, but initially we just get raw pixel values. And so our features then for for this, they they are a bit closer to the pixel level. And so 
Um, in particular, for face detection, what works well are these things called HAAR features. So H-A-A-R. And let me actually draw some. And they might seem kind of, you know, low level. What I mean by that is, for example, here are edge features. And, and they're basically like, if I draw a box around it, uh, they basically look like this here, except, you know, this portion's colored in. And so this portion up here is white, and this portion down here is black. And this, you know, this kind of looks like an edge, right? So here's one portion that's white, and here's one portion that's black. So this seems to detect horizontal edges. And as it turns out, there's also an analogous one uh, that detects uh, vertical edges. So something like this. You know, this is also a, a HAR feature. And so we have something that detects edges. And there's also, we also have other HAR features uh, that detect lines and these detect both horizontal and vertical lines so here is an example of a vertical line that's being detected and so you know this kind of makes sense right so like here's the white portions and if the black portion were aligned if I were to stack these kind of on top of each other they would make a line and so and just like with the edges there is an analogous one uh, for horizontal lines and then there's this other unique one called a for rectangle and it kind of looks a little unusual it's actually set up to be like this and this is kind of where we have some alternating thing going on here where this is these two squares uh, are black and you know these are actually all the hard features and um, that, that are used for something like face detection you might look at these initially and say well how could these possibly be used for uh, something like something like face detection and it turns out that these work are really well because they detect these low-level features that are shared uh, among faces. So like they detect edges and lines and you know, different features of, of faces. And you know it's been shown that using these features it works well. But so how do we actually extract these features? So if you remember back to um, remember back to convolution, this works somewhat similarly to to convolution. Um, but it's not quite it's not quite the same. And so what happens uh, is we basically take uh, what we're like convolution, we kind of overlay this, for example, so we overlay, if I had an image like this, we kind of overlay one of the R features on top of our image here. And uh, instead of doing this convolution operation, what you actually do is you take the sum of the pixels, in the white region minus the sum of the pixels in the black uh, region and that eventually you know if you do that then you get a single uh, value and that's one of our features and you basically take this and you can you know move it around our image like a sliding window sort of thing and we get you know a ton of features in fact we get a lot of features we get a ton of uh, of features. You know, we can get anywhere from like, you know, maybe like 150,000 features for, uh, for, for even just a relatively uh, small image. So that's like, you know, somewhere around there, for example. Let me put an example here because it might not exactly turn out to be this, but the point is you get a ton of features and that's a lot of numbers to work with. So imagine trying to get a new face and then also getting all these, you know, trying to apply the features that we've seen before across all of our training examples and applying all of these to the new input image. That's just way too time consuming. There's no way that, you know, you'd set this up to run face detection. You have to come back, you know, a day or so afterwards or for you to get an actual result back. But this is just way too many features and it's going to be way too time consuming. And so this is kind of the problem that we're, uh, we're encountering with with this is that there's just too many features and so there has so what they suggest uh, in in the paper and what we're going to be going into more intuitively is they suggest a an algorithm called Adaboost um, which is short for adaptive boosting uh, wh what they use this algorithm to try to select the best features that represent um, the, the face that we're looking for and so using Adaboost we can kind of reduce this uh, number of you know hundreds of thousands down to like maybe just a few thousand of the best features and so 
And that's what we are going to be discussing more in the in, in the next video. Um, but I just want to stop here and uh, we'll do a recap. So what I discussed in this video, we discussed what features are. Um, in particular, I mentioned that there's some quantifiable properties that, that are shared by different examples. And in our case, we're using them for machine learning uh, specifically. And so I, I made this analogy of if we're building like an AI to classify different kinds of birds. Some of the example features would be like color of the bird, uh, sound the bird makes, um, the size of the bird, you know, and so on. So these are the kind of features. And then if I give my AI lots of examples with these features and say, well, a bird that's with this particular uh, arrangement of features with these values, then we can classify this as a blue jay or, you know, et cetera. And so we can do something similar with, uh, with face detection, except we have to use lower level pixel features. And that's what these edges, lines, uh, and this four rectangle feature kind of is. These are like the lower level hard like features. And it's been shown that using these features works really well for things like face detection. And so how do we actually extract these features? Well, it's kind of similar to convolution where you take this, uh, treat it as like a sliding window and you kind of slide it over the image, but it's not quite convolution because we take the sum of all the pixels in the white area, subtract that from the sum of all the pixels in, in the black area, and then we get that single value to be our feature. And when we slide this over our entire image and, you know, do all that kind of stuff, then we can end up with hundreds of thousands of features. And that's way too many. And so in the next video, we're going to talk about, intuitively, we're going to discuss an algorithm called Adaboost. And Adaboost will let us reduce this, this from hundreds of thousands of features to maybe just a few thousand features. But those few thousand features are actually going to be the best of the hundred and, you know, in this case, 150,000 features. It's going to be the best of those. So we're going to discuss uh, Adaboost uh, in the next video.